Good evening, everyone. My name is Evelyn Moy. I'm the president of the Moy Family Association. I want to welcome everyone this evening to a very special presentation by Mark Lee Pringle. And his uh, Zoom is going to be on uh, rare weapons from the ancient times to the modern times. So I'm going to hand it off with further, no further ado to Mark Lee Pringle, our Sifu. Mark? And Dr. Hall, <laughs> Dr. Hall, hello everybody, uh, and welcome again to another Zoom uh, with me. I have about 15 different weapons here from uh, ancient China, uh, and then we're going to relate it to some modern usage. Um, I, I still feel that, of course, you know, basic self-defense for on the street, especially nowadays, is uh, very important for everyone. So, you know, even though a lot of these weapons that you'll see are uh, too big, uh, too large, and kind of crazy <laughs> looking, you couldn't carry them around on the street, uh, I can relate it very easily to some very basic self-defense tools that we can use. Okay. We're going to start off right away with probably the, the uh, craziest looking one, uh, and one from the Tang Dynasty. This is called a Nine Dragon fork. Uh, and you can see multiple cutting edges on this. Uh, it has a tripod top to it, uh, kind of like a mini tiger fork. Uh, and a lot, of the, a lot of the common weapons in Kung Fu I did not bring. I just brought the very rare ones that you don't normally see. Uh, if you're a Shaw Brothers or a Golden Harvest aficionado and you watch a lot of the old Kung Fu movies from the 70s, uh, you've probably seen them in the movies, but you don't normally see them, uh, you know, in usage for celebrations or demonstrations most of the time. Again, this one's Nine Dragon. This one's come from a Choi Le Foot family style. Uh, very intricate cutting patterns. And, of course, I can't really use it in here, uh, but you can get an idea. It spins, drops, lifts. So you can kind of use it like a spear that has open and closed actions to it. Uh, but you can catch up someone else's weapon uh, very easily within the, uh, the nine dragon hook areas. The next one, and the most common idea, uh, if you watch any of the uh, Monkey King uh, episodes or uh, the Chinese opera, uh, this is the uh, general piggy rake, a nine-point rake. It has rings on it, uh, and again, stemming from basic farming tools. So, you know, every country has a garden, right? Every country has a stick. You have anything with a long handle. It doesn't really matter what's on the end of it for the most part. If you handle the two-handed position correctly, you can do the same basic ideas. Breaking for this one, of course, lifting side to side action, turn, spin. Right. Okay, then you know, let's see. This one, also from the Tang Dynasty. Uh, this is probably uh, one of the neatest. Uh, weapons stemming from the, the idea of everyone has seen the nunchucks or nunchaku from Okinawa. Well, this is a four piece rotating weapon. Of course, you have the tong spearhead implement on the end, and then um, uh, they call it a melon uh, head hammer on the other end. So you can do inside outside figure eight, smashing through their armor, and of course, cutting with this as well. So you get the basic idea. Uh, you're not going to be carrying that one. Right? Every day. Uh, this one, every movie that has a um, Buddhist monk or Shaolin temple theme, you'll see carrying this weapon. Uh, the larger ones actually have a big hollow 
inside area to, to hold a, a lantern or a lamp. Uh, so they would parade the grounds and just, you know, make sure the grounds were secure around the temple. But then they got the idea of making the edges sharp. And the same basic idea. The circling action, same striking, high and low, side to side, lifting, blocking. And then when you get done destroying your opponent, you can go back and be a Buddhist. Uh, let's see. Here's another great weapon. Uh, <laughs> as my as my aunt would say, uh, <laughs> this one gives me goosebumps just looking at it. <laughs> this is a wolf tooth club. Uh, it has spikes on it, like a big metal pineapple. Um, very sharp, uh, very dangerous. Also has a pike on the end of it. You see that right, John? You can bring it a little closer. So use the same way, long handle, spinning, turning, and of course getting in between someone's uh, knee area, slicing back and forth, stabbing, thrusting, the same basic long handled movement that you would see with any weapon of this sort. Okay. Uh, another rare, uh, you see, well, even though this is common everyday instruments for most of us, chopsticks and rice bowl. Uh, this also comes from Chole Foot style. And of course, in the form, they kind of go through the pretense of eating, but then you see the cupping and stabbing motion with the chopsticks. So, chop, rice bowl, very basic self-defense tools. Now, you might bring the bowl around with you, but you can definitely carry a pair of chopsticks. Uh, John, if you can come forward with this. This is John Splor, and uh, he's a 11-year student of mine, uh, Black Sash, uh, and also indoor student. So that means... Uh, I'm going to lump everything I know on top of him, <laughs> and he's going to carry on the tradition and teach all of his kids. So chopsticks, right? You can carry money inside the pocket. Doesn't matter. Someone grabs a hold of you and right to the eyes. Very basic, uh, and you won't get sued for carrying a, uh, you know, a weapon. It's a self-defense tool. So big difference. You can hold them together, become very strong. Hook to the throat under the groin, uh, even it goes to grab again, over the elbow, inside wrist. So you can do a lot of different things with these. Okay, thanks, John. Uh, this one, because uh, maybe a lot of you out there do lion dance or dragon dance, uh, is a symbol form, also popular in Hungar system. And uh, if you, again, watching some of the old movies, uh, a, lot of, a lot of the ones that have uh, Gordon Liu in it, uh, Gordon Lao, uh, they use some symbols as their uh, kind of Buddhist counterpart weapon. So it's a weapon, non-weapon idea. And they're noisy. And of course, you use them with the lion dances. But using this side-to-side -side chopping, or relief action like a scissor cut, high and low, blocking. At the same time, don't forget, they're very thin brass. They can do some damage. One you don't see very often again uh, is the Shaolin bullwhip. Uh, used basically the same way as any other whip, uh, cowboy style. You can snap it into their eyes, uh, wrap it around their wrist or ankle. Right? You can use it as a double idea this way and trap and block with it. You can use the handle end. And again, making that looping figure. In the old days, they were made out of metal and every single rib was sharpened 
on the end. So, you know, the old uh, Ming to the Qing Dynasty coats that had the big sleeves, you could carry it in your sleeve. No way knew you had it. When you're using it on the street, you just open it up and, you know, cool yourself off. But in terms of weapon usage for self-defense, pops, cuts, blocks, strikes, just like anything else. Now the hoop or ring action, uh, this basically from a Wing Chun style is used as a training tool. So you can use this uh, to add pressure to your wrists and forearms, almost like the opponent hanging on to. So your rolling and coiling action, inside outside blocking, striking under, rolling to the outside, cross inside and out. So as a training tool, they give you a, a little bit of an opponent feel for grappling, especially. Well, they took this idea and not only enlarged it in some cases, but turned it into metal and then made it sharp. So, so this is used monkey style. Uh, this is Evelyn's favorite style. <laughs> so <laughs> the monkey hoop uh, is about this size, sometimes a little bit larger, sometimes smaller. But again, same idea. You can do it for inside outside blocking. You can hook the opponent's arm or leg if they try to kick you, turn over, right? You can wear it this way and still do the other arm and leg action. The smaller metal version of that, and these come in various uh, shapes and sizes. Uh, these are actually moon, sort of moon rings, uh, but they come uh, as a, a snake tongue ring with points on the end, um, wind and fire wheels that have uh, kind of jagged, sharpened cutouts of fire flames on the ends. But these are the uh, most uncommon look that you'll see. And same idea, just like using the symbols. A lot of rolling action, figure eights, inside outside cut. Um, going from the large version of that tong weapon, uh, we have different types of steel whips. Uh, this is a three-section whip. Now, some of them come in nine, 12 length lengths, very long, right? But this is the typical southern style that would come from uh, Guangdong, uh, Hakka families, uh, in the Hong Kong area. And again, you can use this same way as you use uh, nunchuck or nunchaka, uh, has a dart or point on the end. I can't swing the whole thing in here, but you'll get a general idea. You can still do figure eight, loop it over the shoulder, swing the leg, around the body, and also uh, straighten it out and use it as a blocking mechanism. Um, Smaller, almost, uh, you know, these would be huge chopsticks, uh, but uh, metal, and these are called judges' pen. Uh, so the judge, of course, makes the determining factor. Uh, these are made out of brass and usually found uh, in a xing yi, that means a shape and intention form, very straight line type of movement. A lot of inside, outside stabbing. Along those same lines, you see this, and again, a uh, basic self-defense tool. Uh, looks like a basic back scratcher, right? Uh, they're also made out of metal. I have a brass pair as well. Uh, and they're com coming from monkey style again. Uh, and this is a monkey claw. Uh, and the metal ones actually have a little claw hand position on the end. But they're used as
Okay. Oh, here we go. Last but not least, uh, golden melons. Now, uh, these again, just like the hammer on the end of that second weapon I showed you, uh, have that uh, smashing through the armor idea, uh, breaking the opponent's weapon. And of course, you know, any kind of a hammer or bludgeoning tool use the same. Um, this rolling inside outside. Most people will look at it not want to get their arm or leg in the way. And when I do uh, General Kwan uh, as an opera piece, for most places, instead of getting the, the large version of this, you can see this is General Kwan's, uh, the Kwan do, or Kwan knife. Uh, and it's usually about six feet tall and very heavy. Uh, the blade, of course, is a lot bigger. This is just a little training tool. But I use these instead. Uh, doesn't take as much room. With the costume and the beard on, people don't really care what I'm holding. <laughs> so this rolling action, uh, riding the horse, you know, same. And now, relating all of that uh, ancient weaponry to modern day usage, especially uh, the one that we showed last time, the everyday umbrella. Okay. has a hook on the end of it. Uh, a lot of them, not very expensive, about $12 or $15, have a metal pike on the end. Uh, but my only warning is don't sharpen the end of it, then it becomes a weapon. If you leave it the way it is, it's a tool, a self-defense tool, big difference. Um, this probably strikes fear <laughs> in the hearts of uh, most of the uh, my Chinese families. Kaimoso uh, or Komaisui, this one is just a feather duster, but usually made out of hard bamboo. And again, has a very good self-defense application to it. Um, for all you bad kids at home getting whacked with this thing was not pleasant. So about the same length, right? And again, you can carry this around on the street. No one's gonna sue you for this one. The softer version of that is the scholar's horse whip, uh, made out of horse hair. It's the same material actually that they make a lot of the beards in Chinese opera out of. Uh, it has a metal handle to it. And again, same movement. You can do figure eights, blocking, whipping action into their eyes and look very scholarly, scholarly as you do it. Okay, John, you come up with. So now, uh, getting that gamoso uh, or a scholar's whip or umbrella or even, you know, walking cane, same basic idea, almost the same height, has a hook on the end. John does something. Grabs hold or punches, the other end comes in very easily, right? Uh, maybe he grabs my elbow. So hooking over his wrist and turning this inside to strike. Um, I'm going to the side of his neck instead of poking him in the neck or going to his eyes. But that's the idea. He comes up again, surprises me, click to the groin. Uh, very easy. Now, as I said last Zoom, all of this seems logical, easy to understand. Practice it at home, right? Get a good friend, a relative, someone that you can take, you know, basic uh, umbrella or I use these all the time. Just a swimming pool Nerf noodle. I cut it down to size, so it's about the same length as the umbrella, and you can whack all day on your partner. And they'll still help you. They don't want. They won't go home. Okay. I have a shorter staff here today so that you can see any of these long weapons, right? The basic movement is still the same. Whatever uh, crazy pointed thing is on the end, yeah, they all have their own personality and usage, right? Uh, the clawing action or cutting, slicing, but the main function, what? Comes from 
the body, arms, legs, and out. So if you cover basic figure eight, turn back, blocking, high, low, thrusting for spear action. We talked about this before, like playing pool, right? This is very hard for the opponent to see or block. If I swing around this way, they can see it coming a mile away. If I come straight in towards them, very hard to see or stop that action. Rolling through, you can uh, you know, make yourself more dexterous by doing inside, outside hand movements with the fingers. Behind the back, overhead. All the basic movement that you would see in any normal Kung Fu form. Right. Well, you can do all of those same techniques with any of these weapons. I'm doing time job. So, seven fifty-seven. Okay. So uh, that's uh, all the weaponry. Uh, now, do we have time for a question and answer, Evelyn? Yeah. 